Welcome to Shortview Trading. It's around 9.30 a.m. London time, Monday, 22nd of May. Now, if you want to trade markets on a one to two week basis, if you want to trade equity index futures like the S&P 500 futures on that time frame, what factors should you be focused on? How should you go about trading these markets? That's what we want to think about in terms of the next week or two, how to position yourself, what's driving these markets and how to go about trading on them on that one to two week time frame. So markets are fascinating at this moment in time. There's a lot of conflicting signals out there if you read the popular press. On the one hand, you're told that AI and tech are going to rule the world. They're going to drive a new productivity surge. And these are stocks that have to be owned. They're must-own stocks. And of course, if we look at the breakdown of the S&P 500's market cap, Year-to-date gains, 20 stocks dominate all of the gains in the S&P's total market cap. The other 480 stocks haven't added anything whatsoever. So tech looks like it's driving this market higher uh, and dominating the outlook for, for the equity market on the one hand. Yet on the other hand, if you look at liquidity indicators, as we were talking about last week, you look at the dollar or you look at gold and silver, it looks like liquidity is tightening up. The DXY index that we're putting up in front of you now has found a floor and been bouncing in May. And that floor around sort of 100 and change, that type of level is looking reasonably solid from a technical perspective. And of course, tightening dollar liquidity is generally coincident with the S&P going down, as you can see on this chart that we're popping up in front of you. So those signals are conflicting. And on top of that, we have issues like the debt ceiling debate out there looming in the next week or two. It looks as though negotiations are going in the right direction, but who knows? We could easily go up against the wire. There could be some real challenges. Negotiations could break down. The right wing of the Republican Party could cause problems. All sorts of issues potentially loom on that debt ceiling side and whether or not the US is going to be paying its bills as we get into June. So the question is, what do you do if you're a swing trader and you're thinking about markets on a one to two week basis? Well, generally, we lean most heavily on our one to two week short term models. But at the moment, they've got a bit of a mixed signal. If you look at some technical models, they've been pretty oversold of late and they look like they're, they're bouncing and going to be moving back towards higher levels, driving this equity market higher, as you can see in this chart that we've been putting up in front of you. Or indeed, if you look at put to cool ratios, you get the opposite signal. The market's got limited downside protection in portfolios. Traders have taken off their, their puts. They're, ex they're getting more exposed to the upside. They're not protected against wobbles. And generally, when they are protected against wobbles, it's a good contrarian buy signal. So this model is now on sell. And then added to that, if you look at the S&P 500 and you look at its sort of range over the last six months since its October lows, it's been in an uptrend channel. But right at the moment, it's bang in the middle of that. And in fact, it's consolidated for the last seven weeks. And it looks like it's trying to break to the upside out of that consolidation range. So the question is, how do you deal with all these conflicting factors and conflicting noises and even different model signals? And that's what we digest and distill each and every day in the Daily Rag, also known as the Rag Trader, where we think about markets on a one to two week time frame. We update our models and we update our view, our recommendation on how you trade S&P equity index futures on a long or short basis with entry levels, stop levels and so on. If you're interested in taking a free trial of that please click on the link below or if you're already a subscriber it should be in your inbox every every morning London time around 9 a.m. 8.30, 8.30 a.m. So what are we watching today and this week? What kind of factors, uh, macro data, events, speeches are we watching that might be influencing markets over the course of this week? Well, there's a few key themes. Firstly, there's flash PMIs on Tuesday, a, a first take on global economic activity in May, the first three weeks of May, the flash estimates for manufacturing and services. They'll be watched closely, mostly on Tuesday, as I mentioned. On top of that, we've got some US housing data over the course of this week, uh, pending new home sale, new, pending sales and new home sales over the course of this week. That's key. The housing trend is important in the US. Then there's a bit of an inflation hit with U UK inflation on Wednesday, headline and core, very important. Is it sticky or is it starting to ease? And then we've got US PCE deflator We're out with the personal income and spending data on Friday. And then finally, on top of that, there's some key earnings, most importantly, NVIDIA, 
but also some more retailers following on from the retailer earning theme that we had last week. So that's it from us. That's your Morning Market Hit for Monday, 22nd of May. Thank you for listening. Please do subscribe to these videos on YouTube. Uh, simply click on the subscribe button and like and share on social media or follow us on Facebook, Twitter and or LinkedIn. Thank you for listening. Stay safe. Trade well.